guys this is our first set of notes for unit three so now we're going to move into a big chunk of biological psychology so this is going to take a look at quite a bit of the evolutionary perspective neuroscience perspective and to some extent behavioral genetics as well the set of notes that i'm going to go through with you today they might be a little overwhelming and kind of confusing we are going to do an activity to demonstrate neural firing and neural functioning when you guys are in class with me. So hopefully those will go a long way in helping you to apply these concepts and understand them a little bit better. So very important to keep in mind that you will be responsible for understanding the various different parts of a neuron. So you can see here this is a microscopic image of actual cells, actual neural cells within a cluster of neurons. So you can see things such as the cell walls, the dendrites, the axons, and things along those lines that we're gonna be discussing right now. So at the top of a neuron, these little branch-like things here, these are called your dendrites. Dendrites are what receive the information that's being sent along the nervous system from a prior neuron. Okay, so it's what's going to be causing the sense receptors to be able to get that piece of information and send it on down along the rest of the neuron. The dendrite is going to take the piece of information, that message, and it's going to send it into your cell body, which houses the nucleus. The nucleus is what's going to provide the message with the energy that it's needing to carry the rest of it further down along the chain, so to speak. So once the message has gone through to the cell body and hit the nucleus, it will travel down along the axon to the axon terminals. And it's the axon terminals that will send the information on to the next neuron in the nervous system chain. Now, insulating the axon in a neuron is something called the myelin sheath. The myelin sheath is like a fatty tissue substance and what it does is exactly that. It insulates and kind of um, fattens up the axon so that way the message can travel faster and to ensure that when we experience neural firing that it happens at the rate that it's supposed to happen at. In between each of the myelin sheath along the axon is something called a node of Ranvier. These are just gaps in the fatty tissue of the myelin sheath along the axon. So this is where you'll see the axon terminal, excuse me, the axon itself. So this is where you'll see the axon itself. Also of important note on this breakdown is the cells that are found in the myelin sheath. And these are called Schwann cells. These are non-neural cells, and they're what generate that fatty tissue of the myelin sheath. It's very important that you are able to differentiate between all of these terms and what they mean. So, how does a neuron communicate? When we talk a lot about these messages that travel from neuron to neuron to neuron down a nervous system chain, the thing we need to keep in mind is how that is going about being sent, and how these neurons know to fire to send a message and to go down along the path that they go. So the first thing that you need to keep in mind when you're understanding the communication of neurons is the resting potential. When a neuron is in an imbalanced state within the axon, that means that it's inactive. It will not be firing yet. However, it is ready to fire. It just needs some level of indicator that it is good to go. And we'll get into what that means in a second. So the inside of your cell of a neuron in resting potential is negative relative to the outside of the axon. So where we refer to that, if you see down here, there are these two chemical symbols. Na is for sodium, K is for potassium. These two ions are necessary in creating the balance that is needed for a neuron to fire. So the cell needs to be at a negative charge, as it is right here, and then the outside of the axon needs to be at a positive charge. In a typical day, your neurons are going to receive literally hundreds of messages.
throughout that time frame. Some of them are going to be what we refer to as excitatory. These say, fire the message, it needs to keep going down the chain of the nervous system. And some of them are referred to as inhibitory. So they're saying, hey, stop, don't fire, the message doesn't need to go anymore. There are more excitatory messages being sent to the neurons than inhibitory. This is when you have a scenario where the cell body has reached its threshold and exceeded it. Okay, so it's met its um, daily intake, so to speak, of messages. So once it's gone over that threshold, there is an electric pulse, and this is when the neuron is going to be able to fire. So this whole firing process of the neuron sending the message down through its entire structure is called the action potential. This is when the neuron's impulse has electrical charge to it, and it travels from the cell body down the axon to the axon terminals at the axon's membrane. It fires on the all or nothing response. So by that we mean exactly as it sounds. It will either fire or it will not. And if it doesn't, that means that there's not enough energy, there's not enough excitatory messages within the neuron to tell it that it's hit that uh, threshold point and that it needs to go. There is no halfway in an action potential process. The neuron will either go or it will not. The intensity of the action potential structure is going to remain the same throughout any level of neural firing. So it doesn't get stronger, it doesn't get weaker, it's just always the same. You're not gonna have a scenario where one neuron will fire faster or more intensely than another. When depolarization occurs, this is when the positive sodium ions on the outside of the neuron that are entering into it make it more susceptible to establish the firing of that action potential. So depolarization is when those sodium ions kick into the neuron and send that message out that it's okay for the action potential to start. A refractory period is when the neuron has gone about firing itself. And in this scenario of the action potential, it pauses for a short time. So when the neuron has fired, it's shot all of its energy out from the dendrites down to the axon terminal, and it's established itself as the all or nothing principle. So once that energy is gone, it needs a short time frame to kind of bring its energy back up. This is referred to as the refractory period. It's a time when the potassium ions move out of their cell and they can't fire. So you can see the differing graphs here. In depolarization, the sodium is coming in. In the refractory period, potassium is going out. So this is just another graphic representation for you to be able to see what's going on in the axon. Since the action potential is establishing itself within this axon right here, this really long portion of the neuron, this is just meant to be a close-up of just one section of the axon. So you see here, there are sodium channels within the axon, and this is a magnified view, so you see that the stimulus has arrived, that electrical impulse has established itself to get to the axon to say, fire this message. The sodium channels are going to open up, and the ions will rush in to make it possible for the neuron to fire. Now, this is depolarization here. When we come down this way, this is the refractory period because as the energy form has gone out and that message has been sent, there is no energy any longer in, the ax in that portion of the axon. So the potassium channels are going to open and the potassium ions are going to move out of the axon. This right here is that refractory period when it gets that established point where there is no more energy and it needs that slow little move back up to a point of uh, having its stabilized electrical impulse. The first sodium channels are going to close, but the farther down they are, the axon is going to continue to open, and so that is going to enable the, the depolarization that happens up here to keep going. So, to add more information to all of this setup, if you think about the action potential structure as a wave, it's a little bit easier for you to be able to remember. If you're a visual learner, if this kind of thing is more beneficial for you, I would definitely write this graph down on your notes 
because I always found that when it came to studying this action potential process, my best way of looking at it was looking at visuals or trying to establish it that way. So if you think about the breakdown of the process of action potential within the axon, you have resting potential. So this is when the sodium and the potassium ions are stable. And then as we move through and establish the action potential process and we get to depolarization, this is when the sodium moves into the axon and makes it more positive on the inside to be able to fire the message. As it moves down this whole setup, you have the scenario where potassium ends up moving out of the axon and establishes itself as this resting potential again. The repolarization here is the refractory period. That's another way of looking at it, is calling it repolarization. So you can see that at any given point on the axon, the action potential passes through the same kind of process. So you're always going to have this structure at any given point along the axon. There will always be the resting potential when the excitatory messages hit their threshold to send the heads up, so to speak, that the neuron can fire. Depolarization, where the sodium moves into the axon to send the message along. The repolarization, or the refractory period, where the potassium moves out of the axon and then reestablishes the resting potential again. So if you think of it just as a wave, it's a little bit easier to understand. So what we have down here, just to reiterate this, there is a small amount of sodium that will enter the cell of these axons and a small amount of potassium that will exit these cells. So to maintain the original balance of these elements, each portion of the axon in a neuron has something called the sodium-potassium pump. This continuously is moving sodium out of the cell and potassium into it, so that way there is always that constant level. So the neuron will always fire on the all-or-nothing principle, and so it will always have enough energy to fire.